Hi, welcome back. We're going to formalize what it is to do confidence intervals for means. And we're going to do that over here. We're going to do our four-step process. This should not look terribly different from what we've already been doing. However, and that's part of the reason why I'm not hiding any of it, um, but I will point out some important things to kind of keep in the back of my head, back of your head, sorry. <laughs> and again, copy all these notes are down below. Um, if you're just joining us just for the kind of the recap, um, feel free to go down and grab those. If you have any questions, leave a comment, hit like and subscribe if you have a chance, and we'll go from there. So um, when you can need to construct and interpret a confidence interval, you need to do, go through and you're going to state what you're doing first of all. So again, what's the parameter that you're trying to find the interval for? And at what confidence level are you doing this? The plan, again, is called a one sample T interval for mu, um, which is our mean. Make sure you hit the three conditions. We need to be random and we need to be 10%. Those two are the same as what we've been doing. Okay, the randomness allows us to take it out to the population. The 10% rule makes sure we don't have to worry about replacing anything. The normal, however, there's a th three possibilities for you to be able to get to say that we can treat this as normal. One is that the population is approximately normal. If that's the case, then our sample is going to be approximately normal. We can use the um, central lemma theorem saying that as long as n is bigger than or equal to 30, we can treat it as approximately normal. Or in lieu of that, let's say if you have a sample smaller than 30, then at that point what you're going to do is you're going to look at the dot plot or the box and whisker plot and try to see if it's relatively normally shaped or more importantly that there is not a strong skew or outliers to what's going on. Okay. Do, you're going to go through, you're going to show your formulas, you're going to show your work, you're going to do your answers and formulas, remember both general and specific. And so here we've got point estimate plus or minus margin of error. So that's the um, general one. Here is the specific one, x bar plus or minus t star um, times the standard error for what you got for your sample divided by square root of n. Degrees of freedom is always, in this case, going to be n minus 1. And then for your conclusion, we are blank percent confident that da, 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 da. And just always make sure that you also include context because without context, it's what's the point? All right. So I want to walk you through this first one here. Feel free to hit pause, but I think this is one of those things where this is the type of question that I often see. It's a good multiple choice type of question. Um, and I want to make sure that you guys are kind of set for that. But go ahead and hit pause if you'd like to. So the city council members want to estimate how many pounds of trash households in the community produce per week to determine the estimate, an estimate for the standard deviation of the weight of trash produced in a small random sample of households are selected. The trash was weighed on garbage day. This produced an estimated standard deviation of 36 pounds. Great, Mr. Hayes, where's the mean? And where's everything else? Well, here we go. All right, so how many households need to be surveyed um, to estimate the mean at 95% level with a margin of error at most three pounds? So notice here, I want, and we've done problems like this a little bit before back when we were doing margin of error way back in the day. So we've got three pounds there. We know it's going to be Z star times at my standard error over squared event. So again, we know some of these, right? Three is going to be here. Standard deviation over here is 36. I'm trying to find the squared of N because we're trying to see how many households. Now the question is, what do I use for my um, T score? Actually, that should be T. But actually, I think I was already kind of thinking ahead there. My apologies. And the reason being is that if you don't know what it's going to be, you're going to use the z-score, okay? Because we don't know what it is. So we're going to go ahead and put in 1.96 here. And again, um, so we're going to use z-star when we don't know what t-star score to use. Okay, because and it, it, again, this is just my gut reaction. It basically kind of boils down to this: if n ends up being too small or too big, and it doesn't quite work here, then you can just either you know you can, you can increase it from there. So this will at least give you a very very good ballpark figure. So when I do this, you're going to go through the math. So again, easy way to do it: the square root of n on both sides. Okay. So then we're going to end up with the square root of n is going to equal 1.96 times 
times 36 divided by 3. And when we do that, we're going to get an answer of 553.19. Now, big question, do we round it down or round it up? Always play the conservative card, and we're going to say, all right, we want to be safe with this, so we're going to say 554 households. Okay, so there's that. For part B, so after solving part A, the council members decide there'd be too much work to weigh all the garbage. So they give up hopes of estimating the true mean weight within three pounds and select a random sample of 15 households and just weigh the trash for each of those on garbage day. Away we go. Here are the results. And for those of you guys who care, I am very sorry that the 19.8 bled over it on the other side. It's very sad. And if you don't care, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so calculate and interpret a 95% count, uh, confidence interval for the mean weight of trash for all households. Now, since we're giving you data here, you're going to have to go through and calculate out both the standard error and for this sample and the mean. Okay, you can do that through Staplet, you can do it through your calculator, you can do it through list one and you know one variable stats, whatever you want to do. If you want to do it by hand, you're crazy, but that's okay. You know, it, to each their own. So this is what so after you guys do that, run through this and come back and check your answers. So state mean is the true mean weight of trash for all households in the community. We're doing this at a 95% confidence level. So plan, we're gonna do a one sample T interval for mu for the means. So random, it says it's a random sample of 15. 10% rule, 15 is definitely less than one-tenth of all households in the community. And for normal, there's no strong skewer outliers. Notice it's pretty evenly distributed across here, even though that these are kind of spread out. We only have two that are relatively close on top of each other. So it's, yeah, we can go ahead and treat it as normal. So for the do, my point estimate plus margin of error, so I've got x bar plus or minus t star times the rest of that. And so let's go ahead and finish this out. So when you do all of this, we're going to end up, you got a mean of 68.85 pounds plus or minus. Now, our t star for this, remember, degrees of freedom here is going to equal 14. So you got 15 minus 1. So you're going to end up with 2.145 times and a standard deviation should be right around 35 36 35.78 divided by the square root of 15 and that is going to give you a confidence interval running from 49.03 to 88.66 okay so for your conclusion here we are 95 percent confident the true mean weight. Um, with the interval. From 49.03 to 88.8 or 88.66 pounds, because again, context, contains the true mean weight of trash for all households in the community. They'll give you more room on the test. <laughs> anyway, so Again, a very familiar thing, slightly different context. Honestly, this part, you guys probably have a, with the exception of putting in the context, you probably have a good grasp on from proportions. So this part right over here is just the new part that we really kind of need to focus on. So when you guys come back, we've got two more um, lessons on confidence intervals for means. One of them is the difference of means, um, where we're going to do some subtraction of the averages, and then there's one called the mean of differences, which is something a little bit different, but we'll, um, you'll have to see that in the second video after this one. So anyway, hope everything's going well. Again, let me know if you need some help with something, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.